such an amazing story. And um, now I, I want to tell people the, the story I've heard. Uh, my understanding is when when you started the real estate business, you were actually living in your car. Well, not when I started, but close. Uh, I got into real estate thinking, well, this is going to make me a lot of money real quick, and I'm going to bring my parents from Czechoslovakia. We're going to go in limo everywhere and stay in fancy hotels and fly first class and all that, you know, those big dreams that we all have. And many people crush it from the beginning in real estate. That was not my case. I guess I'm a slow learner or something. I don't know. <laughs> So two years into the business, and I was doing the stuff. You know, I went to all the training, and I went to the workshops, and I got the free tapes and all that. But two years in, um, I got kicked out. I was renting a little house, not even a house, just a room, in down in California. And things got so bad, the lady kicked me out. I was like over two months back on the rent, and th that was only like 400 bucks. I didn't even have that. So I had a big... I got this from another agent who sold it to me on payments for $470, and I was making like $50 a month payments. He sold me a Cadillac DeVille. Now, I don't know if you know, Jason, but those are the big, giant boats. You know, those yeah, boats. that's a big car. So this was an old rust bucket. The, the passenger window wouldn't roll up half the time. It was giant. It, it was like two miles a gallon, I think, on a good day downhill. So uh, this became not just my car, but office where I worked. And my home, I slept in it. There was a little liquor, st liquor store, and for those of you guys who know Pico Rivera, on Pico Boulevard, there was a liquor store. I, mean, there. I, I went back a few years ago, and I would just park behind it because they had these big lights. I guess they had trouble people breaking into the liquor store. And I felt safe there, so I would, at night, first I would try to stay in my office. We had a big Century 21 office where I worked at the time. But they would have night crew, and then the night crew would activate the motion alarm. So I was tripping the alarm at night, sleeping under my desk. So I got in trouble a couple of times, so I couldn't do that anymore. So I stayed in my car. I slept in my car, not for too long. Fortunately, after a while, my friend kind of took pity. And at first, I didn't want to say anything to anybody. I was kind of embarrassed about it. So sure. I was embarrassed and afraid to ask for help. But uh, then I did, and my friends took me in, and then things kind of turn around but yeah that was kind of a two years into the business woo -hoo, you know thumbs up <laughs> <laughs> well man you know that that has to be i mean that has to be something tremendous to have to overcome just mentally and have yeah. the mindset to overcome that i mean how you, you know for most of us i mean nowadays we're upset because hey you know a contract didn't go our way or you know somebody stole our sign you know stuff that really aren't that isn't that big of a deal and we completely our mindset completely breaks down for the day you know somebody was mean to me on the phone kind of stuff and yeah. um i mean but you were you were you're basically homeless you're living in your car you had immigrated from another country two years before i mean that's a big deal how did you how did you develop the mindset to be able to get out of that and, and pull yourself out of that well two situation? things happen at the same time or three really one even when things were really bad, and they were really bad, I'm not going to kid you. I mean, living in a car is, is pretty depressing. You're tired. You feel embarrassed. You're cold. You're hungry. Yeah. It's just bad. But there was always this flame somewhere deep inside me that I always felt it's going to be all right. This is all temporary. It sucks, but it's going to work out. I always had this, this, this sense of hope and possibility, and I don't really know where it came from. I just kind of knew that I will sooner or later turn around. So that was the first thing. And the second thing, I hit the rock bottom, in my opinion, for me. We all have different levels of rock bottom. This was mine. Yeah. And I said, all right, this is clearly not working. Whether I will stay in the United States or not, i got to do something different. i got to turn things around now. So it created a lot of pain. And as you know, you're, of course, familiar with Tony Robbins, the drive that drives us is either drive for pleasure and drive for pain. And sure. this kind of experience, you know, sleeping in the car, being homeless, not having any money, where you, I would literally walk into the grocery store and sneak a piece of bread or something that I would steal just to eat. And I would go to Taco Bell, I don't know if they still have it, but they used to have a 49 cent bean burritos. And I would just gorge on those. Now, they're not really good for you, especially when you're in real estate, if you know what I mean. <laughs> but, you know, back then yeah. it was good, so it was all right. So these two things, it was extremely painful, embarrassing, and difficult. And on the other hand, there was this sense of hope and possibility. And as they say, when the student is really ready, the teacher appears, and there were three people that appeared within like days in my life. 
The first one was Tony Robbins. Um, yeah. I discovered the personal power back then it was cassette, that's how way back we go. <laughs> and I got a hold of it and it changed my thinking and I finally understood that a lot of the trials and tribulations of my life were a result of my beliefs, my expectations, and the thoughts I was carrying around, all the garbage I had in my head about how hard it has to be to make money, about how difficult it is to make money, and how hard you have to work and all that, which is just part of the yeah. I've, I've done personal I've power, that. too. Have you done um, it? Also, you yeah. yeah, I've actually done personal power, um, I think, three or four times. And it's every up. time I do it, I feel like I have a big breakthrough. I mean, yeah. really, real estate agents that really work, me creating that group was a result of me doing personal power, too, the last time. And you're empowering. You have, what, close to 2,000 people there. That is outstanding. I actually, I got almost 4,000 now. No shit. Oh, good for you, man. You're yeah, I got almost 4,000. Yeah, it's growing good like crazy. But, yeah, that's actually a result of um, of personal power, too, and working through that and saying, hey, I yeah. want to, you know, um, you know, I want to change things that are happening in the industry, and I want to help other people and um, yeah. help other agents. And, uh I mean, and you're right. There's a lot of people that they just have beliefs that they don't deserve to make more money. Yeah. And, um, and you know, they that's don't the deserve better things. Yeah, it's a mental game, first and foremost. You know it better than anybody. Yeah. But if you believe you deserve it, if you don't believe you can do it, if you don't believe it can be fairly easy, it's not a simple, easy business, but, you know, it beats that's, 